was only upon my arrival at the Geneva airport that I realized it was over. Over there, it was difficult. Physically, but mostly psychologically. And if I had to do it again, well, I don't think I would. In September 2008, I left Switzerland and its comfort to spend 10 months alone in the archipelago of Tonga, in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. To leave, I brought with me a machete and my Swiss knife. I also had a medical kit, satellite phone, solar panel and battery to supply energy for my cameras. It's a dream I wanted to realize. Uh, I've been working for 14 months for it uh, and now, now I'm here. Uh, but I think the most important thing is to stay zen uh, and to keep calm because whatever happens, uh, I'll be alone. The archipelago of Tonga is lost in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. The island of Tofua is about 250 kilometers away from the capital and its last inhabitant left more or less 20 years ago. Tofua is a caldera, a former volcano which exploded. In the middle, there is a lake of sulfuric water and north of the island you can see the smoke from the still active volcano. It's only 24 hours I'm here. I'm missing food, I'm missing drink, water, I'm missing everything. It's horrible. No, it's not horrible, but it teaches me that you cannot do it at the first time. You have to go step by step and uh, I have to learn. And it takes much more time than what I expected. The next day, I installed my solar panel to charge my batteries and I went back fishing. At sundown, I still hadn't caught anything. But just as I was about to give up, I caught my first fish. To top that, it was big enough to fit me over the next two days. I feel good. I feel much better than this morning because I could get a fish, I could eat it and I still have a little bit for tomorrow. Then I'm happy. I will just finish this fire again, five minutes, 10 minutes and after I go sleep because I don't want to waste some uh, wood. There is many, but it's, uh, it is not dry. All the wood is, all the wood is, is wet. Hello, hello. Ah, it's full of ants. Probably I cannot even eat it anymore. Oh yeah, right. I was sure. They got it all. They weren't any friends on the island. I had to find a way to preserve my fishing. At home in the Alps, the elders used to use two ways to preserve their meat. Salting and smoking. All right, the target is to make something to smoke the fish because I hope to have many, many fishes. No, many, many fish. And uh, I need to, to smoke them. Building the smokehouse didn't take too much time. worked perfectly. My grandfather would have been proud of me. For the first two days, I slept as I could, using the curved trunk of a coconut tree. But I wasn't going to spend 10 months like that. I had to build a shelter for myself. I started with the roof. Lattice work, coconut lashes, young or dry, the usual luck or the unusual one. For the roofing, I used coconut branches that I plated through the paneling, hoping this wouldn't let the water through. And four days later, my shelter was built, and I was able to move on to something else. I still had to accomplish one important ritual, in order to live at nature's rhythm. I had to stop time. The thing is, 
I should find a nice place for the watch, not too far from the ocean, so even if it's underground, it can get a good vibe from the sea. Yes! It's beautiful. So, from now on, I will be here for 9 months and 20 days approximately by myself, uh, where I have stopped the time. At the beginning, fishing took up most of my time. I wasn't catching fish every day, and I was spending long hours waiting for them to bite. I imagined a system to free myself from this chore. The principle was simple. A very heavy branch as a fishing rod, one heavy stone as a counterweight, the fishing line and the bait, and that did the trick. All right, that's finished. I'm exhausted. It looks very easy, I know, huh, to do it, but... I don't eat so much now because I don't have the choice and um, I drink, that's okay, but every time I have to do a physical effort, I feel uh, tired very easily. Then uh, now I will, uh, I will have a rest. Ha, I'm not in a hurry neither, anyway. When you are hungry, you are less picky. I found some sea snails. Well, only a few of them, not enough for a feast. Oh, but enough, huh? The lack of food, the sudden solitude, no points of reference, I don't know what waited on me the most, but after eight days, I cried. My family is missing me, and uh, everything I know is missing me, actually. Here it's nice, but I, uh, I cannot discover, I have no food, uh, I have water, yes, but uh, it's so hard, it's very hard. <clears throat> and uh, in my house I have everything. Then I say, why, why are you doing this, you know? You, you, could, you, could, you could stay home, cool, with your friends, girlfriend, family. just hit me without warning. I was down in the dumps, 22,000 kilometers away from home, far from my friends, my family, my fridge, and worst of all, this was my idea. Fortunately, I had the flag of the motivation, on which my friends had written me messages. Reading them gave me the courage to go on. And to top this, it was that day I saw whales for the first time. And when you see this, I can tell you, you forget all your problems. I miss many things here and uh, there is many things I have here that I cannot have home but in the morning it's very hard to to put this in mind but in the evening yeah I, I feel this again and I feel very happy I feel quiet I think what I have to learn is to go slowly now I have to learn to take the time to do everything here still everything I do I want to do it fast make it finish as quick as possible and it's not the way um, I had to push this this plastic which was the protection of my solar panel because I realized that my roof is not waterproof at all and um, I really need a waterproof uh, roof for all the material I have that's why I put this uh, and I will start today doing a um, uh, to work with the coconut sleeve to do a waterproof roof. The first step was to reach the top of the coconut tree. But if climbing up a tree seems to be rather easy, reaching the palms of that tree with such a smooth trunk is a different kettle of fish. Having accomplished this exploit, I stripped the tree of its palms. I had chosen them because of their length, which pretty much matched the, the one of my roof. Then comes the weaving. The method is simple. Once above, once under. Once above, once under. On lève, on laisse en bas. On lève, on laisse en bas. On lève. On descend, on ramène. In the Tonga Islands, the roof of the shelters are covered by layering lattice work, which makes them waterproof. Obviously, quite a few of them are needed anyway. Another major problem I had was the mosquitoes. There were thousands of them in that forest. 
So the best way to keep them away from my camp was to clean around the shelter and to open up the space so the wind from the ocean could create a natural protection. But it didn't work. Since this morning, I hear the volcano. And I didn't know what happened and I was a bit worried because we never know. And that's why I, I came to the top. I have to find out. I came to the top to have a look at the volcano. The way up to the volcano isn't really a piece of cake, especially when it comes to walking through the tangled fern. But once you reach the side of the crater, the side makes you forget the effort. Sometimes uh, I, I feel lonely. The, the only thing who, who never, who didn't change here, it, it's me. I mean, I, I, see, at the beginning. Uh, but I'm here for one month here, and it's true that I, I miss pretty much everything. Uh, I'm in the middle of the nature, but I'm in the middle of nowhere. Uh, I'm alone. I, I'm really alone, and that that's not easy. After my first visit to the volcano, I decided that every day I would extend the known perimeter to an extra few hundred meters. I'm always looking a little bit around. Just... There is always things to discover, to find. Always, always. Today it was a mango tree. Enormous. Bending because of too many fruits. To find those fruits almost ripe, felt like getting Christmas presents. In order to reinforce my roofing, I needed some rope. And on Tofua, the rope tree existed. I only had to find it. Oh no, that's not solid at all. That's not it. This is completely rotten. And after several attempts, I finally found what I was looking for. Yes! I only had to cut some long straps out of the bar and let them dry under the sun. I finished one side of the roof uh, today. Uh, I, we still have to see if it's waterproof, of course, but at least I did it with nothing, uh, with my hand, and the coconut sleeve and... Uh, and uh, I am proud of, of, uh, of this, and you know the life here, uh, it's very simple, but it's not, not as uh, easy as that. Huh? Uh, everything you have to do yourself, uh, and uh, I learn a lot about this. So it gives me a new perception of, uh, of the world. Since fishing didn't bring me food every day, I added a new dish to my diet. Small coconut sprout, cooked over charcoal, dressed with ashes and bran. The coconut was easy to cut open. The inside looked like a fruit compote. It is hard to describe the taste. Um, soft, a bit sweet, but with no taste of cocoa. And warm, it was excellent. After more than one month on the island, I was able to survive and get organized the essential. Yeah. There was only one problem left. The lack of human contact. What I realize now is that I start feeling lonely because I have nobody to talk. I have nobody to change opinion. And then I talk to myself. But I always agree with me. Then it's not fun. And. Uh, Nobody can give me more information about what I know already. And uh, I'm just alone. Whatever I do, I am alone. I cannot say, hey, yeah, woo, -woo. You know, I, <laughs> I think I've, in my mind I have enough. But I start to be bored now. 
Lone, lonely and bored. I found a very nice place there, but the access is very hard to go from the beach because of all the stones. Then maybe I can find the easiest uh, way to go from inside. Yes! I contemplated the vastness of the ocean, savoring my victory. But taking a look around me, I found myself faced with the worst of our civilization. So much trash, thrown into the ocean thousands of kilometers from here and carried away by the water streams to end up along the shore. I even found a bit of bamboo. What could I use it for? I decided to bring it back to the camp until I found a use for it. But I already had my ID. Allez! And now, in theory, I have a didgeridoo. If you forget the mosquito, life on Tofua might seem to be quite mellow. But every day, when going fishing, I took the risk of wounding myself walking on the rocks. I regularly scrapped myself during my explorations in the forest. I ended up having numerous infections beneath the skin that didn't heal anymore. I had to use my satellite phone to call Dr. Richon in Switzerland. He did the follow-up from there. Yes, Jack, this is Xavier Rosset calling. Mentally speaking, I'm fine. I can pretty much do whatever I want, but uh, it's physically. I have a small technical problem. Uh, I need you either to... I described him how things looked. He told me what to use from the medical kit that he helped me to put together in Switzerland. Now I go, I go for it. I, don't, oh, I really don't want to do it because it hurts already so much. Maybe after it will be better. The dirt comes out every day, every day. I have to wash every day to the sea water. After I have to boil uh, um, flat water. I have to clean again with normal water. I have to put betadine, which is a special cream. I am in the middle of nowhere and I'm taking antibiotic. In uh, five days, if, he, if it not goes better, I have to call back uh, the doctor. <laughs> Thanks to my doctor's advice, I'm taking special care of my wounds. They healed within a few days. However, even if I was busy every day, I started to suffer from another problem that medicine couldn't heal. I have no motivation to do anything anymore now. Because uh, I am alone. Uh, I didn't even try to do the fire yet with the wood, you know? Because... Uh, I, because uh, I am fed up, I don't have any, I don't know, maybe why, why should I do this, I am alone, who I should share this with, nobody, nobody. I come because I come and need some help to, for my friend in my village was cutting his fingers like this break the cover and break his fingers too just as if he had heard me Luffy appeared in my life a few days per year farmers from the neighboring island come to Tofua to cultivate kava a plant whose roots is used to produce a bitter drink Luffy was one of them 
He knew more or less where my camp was. He came to me, hoping that I could save his friend's finger. But their camp was more than six hours walk away. All right, now I am the, on the way back to the village of my friend Luffy, because one of his friends had a big cut on the fingers. A little bit of the finger went out, and maybe I can do something. All right. I will try to do my best, but if the infection starts already, it will be too late. The best way to see is to go and have a look. Luffy preferred to follow me, so he could adapt his speed to mine, rather than looking over his shoulder to avoid losing me. Very sweet, eh? Mm. The middle, eh? It's very, very sweet. Oh, it's tellement bon. Mm. Once we reached the camp, I was quickly able to measure the gravity of the case. You okay? Malo I could administer first aid, but I knew that he would have to get to a medical center as soon as the boat would be able to pick him up. In the meantime, I did my best with the medical kit and my little knowledge. Yo! All right, I think I did my best with, with your friend. Until tomorrow I can do, but after it's better. He goes to hospital. <laughs> okay, thanks. I'm a doctor in Tofua, but <laughs> I did my best. <laughs> Jimmy's finger is going much better now. And for me, it's time to, to go back to Hokula, to my, to my house in Hokula. It's true that makes me strange to leave these people. They're very nice people. And to go back again alone in, in my place, I don't know. But now it's time to go and I am on the way. Very warm day. And, uh... You don't always find solitude, even when you look for it. There is a boat arriving, a sailing boat. It looks like uh, it comes near Okula. For me, it could be an extraordinary visit and uh, I really look forward to see them. The sailboat brought along a group of Norwegians who were completing two months of sailing in the archipelago. For one time, it's not me on the camera. No, it's visitors. <laughs> what do you think about the house? Have you, you, see, you saw it, yeah? luxury <laughs> but it'll do I guess for you for the next uh, half a year or a year you have a bed and you have somewhere to hide from the rain if you're finishing the roof <laughs> you need to finish your new roof first before finishing my roof I took them to the volcano they had the day and I I had all the time in the world it wasn't the first time I was here but until now, I stayed on the crest. With them, I went even closer to the crater. I like this. In a remote island, middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. One, one inhabitant. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of cool. You like a machete? Yeah. You like the work with the machete? Really cool way to go through the forest. I could guide these people, very nice people. Could guide them up to the top of the island and bring them down to the volcano and spend the day with them. They have to leave today, unfortunately. But um, we spent a nice day together and uh, now I get a little bit of rice, I'll get onion, I get one garlic, I get two beers. And I get also um, a Coca-Cola. Then I'm really happy that I met them. Yeah, thank you very much. It was cool because today I was not lonely anymore. I could talk to people. I could exchange opinion. I could, uh, you know, uh, I was not alone anymore. And uh, now it's really it's true that I feel very happy because they were here, but in the other way I, I feel also a bit sad because they're leaving. But the, the, what I have to keep in my mind is that they were here. 
with me and they changed my day. Thank you Norwegian people, thank you very much. Woo. My visitors were right. In December the rain season begins and I had to make sure my roof was waterproof. Once the job done and the last branches fixed, I decided to treat myself to another small luxury. The view and the ocean. But all the work with the machete ended up blunting the blade. Machete doesn't cut anymore at all. And to sharpen it, there was nothing better than the volcanic stone polished by the sea. Once wet, it worked perfectly. <laughs> After a few months on the island, I had enough knowledge, so that something like a routine had settled in. I was quite good at providing food for myself, and the perimeter around my camp had increased considerably, as well as the loneliness. On Christmas Day, I decided to use my satellite phone to leave a message to my parents. It is the first Christmas I spend without you. It feels a bit bizarre, but that's the way it is. I just wanted to wish you a Merry Christmas and Daddy, I hope your hips goes better, that everything goes fine and I wanted to let you know that uh, everything goes well here. Uh, don't worry for me and I wish you a Merry Christmas. To spend Christmas and New Year's Eve alone on an island is really depressing. I was thinking about my friends, my family, the foie gras, champagne and sparkles, all those things usually I don't really like. I was here for another six months of solitude. Well, not exactly, because Gael, my best friend, promised to come over here and spend the two last week with me. But meanwhile, I was alone. That's what I thought, because the arrival of surprising company lifted my spirits. His name is Sugar, and uh, he's nine months old. Uh, it's the father of Fluffy who gave it to me uh, because he thought that I was uh, too much lonely here in Hokula. Luffy, the farmer who came to ask me for help, came back one morning to give me this dog as a gift. He wanted to thank me for having saved his friend's finger. My motivation was back on track. A little garden would add diversity to my diet. So I become a farmer, always using what I could find around. be strange I choose the front of the school to make my plantation but it's strategically uh, very well thinking because um, first of all here it's the only place where there is uh, no big tree another thing also is that it's 15 20 minutes walk from my camp then I, I can come every day because of the of the wild pig and if I don't come every day they will eat uh, all the things that I put here also, one more reason is that the water tanker is here. I will use it to, to give water to my plantation. I need to work more useful than uh, beautiful. I had also kept the watermelon seeds that Luffy gave me along with the dog. The ground seemed fertile and the temperature ideal. So while waiting for things to grow, I decided to continue exploring the island. Looking for new fruits or vegetables, beaches, caves, or simply new landscapes, I walked along the coast to the west, along the rocky cliffs, blocking the access to the sea. Here I am on the west side of the island. Uh, the target was to discover a little bit this part of the island, which is very different than uh, the part where I have my house. Here there is no big trees, there is a uh, low vegetation, uh, and very dry vegetation um, and also one of the goal is to find uh, the Captain Cook cave because it's near the, the ocean but it's so big here that to find it's uh, not near not impossible but very hard Now it's time to go home to cook dinner. 
and to be able to eat, uh, I needed fish. And that evening, I got a super sized surprise. I caught this. I'm a bit scared to see this little beast. Uh, I saw I saw another one approximately one month ago, uh, quite the same size. Uh, I think it's quite big, you see? Apart from the animal being impressive, suddenly I had a large amount of food. I tried my umu. It's a hole in the ground in which you prepare a fire. You put the pieces of fish over hot embers and covering it up completely, just like an oven. The heat that comes from it is supposed to cook everything slowly, over hours. The shark spent the whole night being cooked. I pray that no insect will invite itself to a meal at my expense. Upon removal of the leaves and earth that covered it up, I was relieved. It's hot. It's, uh, it's still hot. The slow cooking was going to preserve the fish for two to three days, but I was frustrated from only eating fish this past month. So I decided to go hunting for wild pig. I try to find a um, pig path. There is many, many paths for the pigs around here. And the pig use this path. And uh, for us it's, it's not possible to, to follow on this path because if they are 60 centimeters high is no more. But uh, if I find one, I want to make a hole uh, on it. Like 80 centimeters long, 40 centimeters large, and maybe one meter 20 deep. And uh, I want to hide and put uh, some coconuts yeah. in it. And maybe I can get a, a pig. Following the path, I wanted to find the right place where the ground was soft and close to water and where pigs would pass by for sure. Water. I think I find a good pig path. Path. And now I have to find a good place and make a hole. While waiting, my little garden had started growing. The first sprouts were visible. It was a great success and the final result looked quite promising. Great! Here are the watermelons. And here there is the little onions. Only one week after my gardening efforts, everything was above ground. Okay, I didn't have a great selection, but I could see that my work was bearing its fruits. The trap was ready, the garden growing, it was the perfect time to pay a visit to the volcano. I woke up this morning and I had nothing to do, then I say, why not to go to, to see the volcano? And uh, on the way from the top I could hear very big noise from the volcano already. When you are down here, it really looks, really look like a moon, moon place. And now I go to see the volcano. each visit to the volcano. I was in contact with the center of the earth. Water, air, earth and fire, all the elements were gathered. 
Thousands of years of tropical rain had forged this magnificent landscape. As I was walking through the canyons, I was thrown deep into the incredible story of the island formation. Scratches were part of my daily number of little inconveniences to which I pay little attention. But when one of them started to swell and I couldn't even bend my finger, I started getting concerned. I, uh... It was really painful. Over the phone, my doctor explained the move I had to carry out to try to stop the infection. In 24 hours, if it doesn't look like it's better, I go to the hospital. It will take me between 5 and 10 days until I can reach the first hospital. They, they can do something for me. Then, uh, you know, I don't have to wait too long. If the infection doesn't stay really uh, in the hand, it can go up to the, to the arm and uh, goes into the blood and it can do a, a general infection. And if I have a general infection, it's my life which is in danger. And, uh, and I don't want to die. <laughs> I'm not scared to die, but if I can do something against, I will, you know. On Tofua, it rains nearly every day. Since some time now, my roof had proven itself to be waterproof. So, well protected, I waited for the rain to stop and was giving my hand a rest. There is nothing really special to do. This is the kind of day you will have to learn to do nothing. Then I do nothing. The next morning, when I arrived at the trap, it was a nice surprise to see it wasn't covered anymore. It was a baby pig, a female. Surely its mother passed next to it, but the little one fell inside. You know what? I made, I made such a big hole just for you. Small pig like you. Ah bah c'est mieux ça déjà. Mieux déjà, hein? Je, il me semble que je parle le langage porcin. I didn't really know what I was going to do with it, but I certainly wasn't going to leave it to die here, alone. A few days later, when my finger was better, I decided to continue looking for Captain Cook's cave. When the Tongan brought me to the island, they had shown me where it was. This time, luck was on my side. I could feel certain vibrations, and I had the feeling I had finally found it. In my garden, the plants were making me happier and happier. Here is one, and here another one, very small, who just started. I'm really happy, and I made it with my with my my little hands, and uh, that's the result. Normally, when I go walking, the pigs follow me, but uh, today I'm doing a, a quite a big walk, and. Uh, the, the pig follow me, but it follow me just for one kilometer, something like this. And after it goes in the bush piggy, piggy. and start to hide. And for me, it takes me maybe two hours to to take the pig back. And uh, after I have to carry it. And the pig doesn't like to be carried. Then uh, he shouts. And uh, to carry a pig. To carry a pig for two hours, three hours like this shouting is not possible. And it's very noisy a pig. And uh, that's why next time I will build a little cage in the front of my house to put the pig because uh, you learn how to be patient. This for two hours now.
Hurry, go. Each day, the island was full of surprises. From waving my machete around, I ended up cutting some strange vine. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, for sure it takes a little bit more time than to drink water in our countries, but at least we have water and here we have time. It's very good, it's a little bit sweet. When I go in the forest, it's really important to have uh, this because the, there is not many coconut around and I need to drink. Since I am in Tofu, it's really the first time I see this. Big wave crashing, it's very big wave. There is the place I go for fishing. And maybe today the waves are like 10 meters higher. It looks like the beginning of a storm or I don't know. Oh la la, big wave. Amazing. Seeing the storm coming in, I wondered if my hut was going to survive. The waterproof ability is one thing, but there were other issues to consider, like the roof flying away or a coconut tree falling on it. I had to get my solar panel out of there. The next morning, coming back to the same spot, there was nothing left. The ocean had taken everything away. In the evening, the wind had become even stronger and by nightfall, my ordeal really began. The cracking noises were pretty scary, but the worst was when the wind turned. The rain hit me straight in the face. There was no place to hide anymore. I was so... Hi everybody! Now it's the morning starts to come again. Which is very good because most of the night I didn't sleep because uh, I could not see around me and I didn't know what happened but I, I could hear uh, many noise, thunderstorm, uh, thunder, lightning and everything and, and uh, I slept a little bit but every time I was falling asleep uh, something wake me up again. And, uh, yeah, very short night. Now I'm happy the day is coming again because I start to be able to see again what happened. It's important. New day, new day. I'm happy because my shelter is not out, it's not destroyed. This is the thing I used to clean in front of my house and uh, I decided to do a two path in front of my house. I know it's not very useful to do this path because every day I have to do it again because the, the leaves from the trees are falling down a lot and uh, I need to do it again but then I have something else to do because sometimes the, the time here is, sometimes is very long then I don't know what to do. I also had to put my solar system back together. Apparently there is no mistake, it is fully charging. I was not sure that the adaptator was uh, working because of the, all the humidity uh, was with the storm. Maybe I thought it was, uh, it was broken, but it still works and it looks like it works good. But there were casualties from the storm anyway. At first sight, everything looked okay. The sugarcane had grown, as well as the onions and the taro. The watermelons, however, didn't make it. They were rotten. It was terrible. Everything was destroyed. I drawn my affliction in the new artisanal project.
I'm quite happy because now I have a, a bet. Sometimes it's hard here to get the motivation. But today, I woke up and I said, yeah, cool, I'm going to do the bench. And now in the evening, I have a bench. <laughs> I have my bench. I'm happy. I was close to the end of my adventure. Soon Gael would arrive to help me. I just back to a social life and get ready to go back home. So I started scanning the horizon. In this world, nothing can be taken for granted. Peggy had a bad surprise in store for me. As usual, she got out of her pen, but this time, she disappeared. Today I went in the island, maybe 500 meters this way, 500 meters the other way. Try to find her, but... The island is so big, you can look for how long you want, I mean... It was not possible to find her, but at least I tried. When I catch her in the hole I did, uh, she was something like three weeks old maximum. She was very small. I had to feed her the best I could and after one week she started to, to eat by herself. That was a great victory for me. I feel like, uh, like a parent who need to let the kids go out. And if it was her decision to go back into the nature and to split with me, and to start doing her life again in the wild. Um, it's her decision and I'm, I'm, I'm happy with it. And now, now uh, she's gone and I have no trouble around my shelter. I'm missing a little bit this, but I mean, you know, it's part of the game. I just hope everything is okay for her. And if one day before I leave, she want to come back to say hello, I'd be very happy. Gael's arrival meant the end of my solitary life and that truly revived my energy. I wanted to show him everything and when I think it back I tell myself it was something incredible. Je savais pas comment j'allais le retrouver. Ça fait tellement longtemps que je le connais, même au fond de toi-même, en connaissant bien. Tu dis est-ce que c'est toujours le même? C'était vraiment l'inverse. Énormément. Là, toute la motive qui revient, toute le. Et ça, c'était cool. C'était cool. It's very nice because since Gail arrived, I, I can start to eat again like the food I used to eat. In Switzerland and here there is dry meat and and cheese and uh, it's paradise of Nirvana. Christmas time. One of Gael's first challenges was finding his way through the forest. Hey Gael, where is the path? Well, ben, ça dépend en fait. Euh, soit par là, soit par là, soit par là. During a little over two weeks, I tried to share my experience of the nine last months with my friend. Fishing, the volcano, I told him everything. My joys, my sorrow, my loneliness. Se retrouver dans un lieu inconnu, absolument fantastique, c'est que du bonheur. C'est là que je me suis rendu compte la difficulté de la solitude, c'est parce que rien que d'être deux, même sans avoir vécu le trip de 10 mois de solitude, tu te rends compte qu'avec quelqu'un, tu peux vraiment partager des trucs énormes. Tout seul, c'est pas de facile. The final departure was closing in. There was one more task to accomplish before leaving the island. When I put the box in the hole, I stopped the time. And what I realize now is that even if I want to stop the time, uh, the time is still running. But you don't have the same perception. And for me it was important always in this trip to know what was the day. And I know that every experience has a beginning and has an end. And uh, when, when, the, 
when the experience starts, when the adventure starts, you really have to push forward, forward. And at the end, you have to accept that you have to quit all this. And it's part of the game, to quit all this and to go back to the life I had before. When I came here, I didn't know anything about this place. Anything. And now, I can say after nine months and a half, I feel home. Yeah, I feel home. Et je sens en toi l'odeur des éléments Et je retourne m'asseoir auprès de ces gens Et je soulève la poussière Les tambours battants Je te ramène les tempêtes avant d'avoir semé Et je sens en toi l'odeur des éléments Et je retourne m'asseoir Auprès de ces gens et je soulève la poussière Les tambours battants, je te ramène des tempêtes Avant d'avoir semé des vents Avant d'avoir semé des vents Les pieds au sol et la tête en arrière Et les yeux dans le ciel Je contemple ces lumières en me demandant souvent la beauté vent Semer des vents Semer des vents Semer des vents